Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Oviedo City Council CRA Governing Board meeting. It is Monday, October 15th, uh, about 5.35 p.m. We have six members of the board present. Uh, Councilman Hankin is absent this evening. The first order of business is approval of our minutes from August 23, 2018, and I'd like to entertain a motion to do so. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion to approve, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving along, we're on to item number two. It's a fiscal year 1819 CRA administration work order budget resolution. This time I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Jones for some background. Thank you very much, Mayor St. Pierre, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the CRA Governing Board. Uh, tonight, this is a request to uh, for the CRA Governing Board to approve the fiscal year 2018 CRA administration scope of services. At the August 23, 2018 meeting, the CRA Governing Board adopted the fiscal year 2018-19 Oviedo CRA budget. The adopted fiscal year budget for 2018-19 uh, allocated $45,000 for the administration and operations of the Oviedo CRA. Uh, at the August 23rd meeting, the CRA Governing Board directed staff to prepare the documentation addressing the potential authorization of SNME to provide continuing redevelopment services. Attached to your agenda item, you have Resolution 112-18, uh, which also approves Work Order CRA 19-01, which includes the scope fees and detailed activities and tasks associated with the day-to-day -day administration and operation of the Oviedo CRA. Uh, the proposed cost for the tasks and activities is $45,000. The CRA has allocated this amount in its fiscal year 2018-2019 budget. Uh, the request before the board uh, is that it recommends the Oviedo CRA Governing Board to adopt Resolution 112-18, approving work order CRA 19-01 uh, for the continued administration of CRA services. Thank you, Mr. Jones. At this time, what is a pleasure of the CRA Board? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Pollock. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 112-18, approving work order, number, work order CRA-19-01. Motion, do I have a second? I'll second. That was you, Deputy Mayor? Mm -hmm. That was you? Mm -hmm. We have a motion, we have a second. Councilman Pollock, you have the floor. No issues. No issues. Deputy Mayor? Um, I think I'm good right now. Thanks. All righty. Go all the way down to the right. Mr. Slattery. I'm fine. All righty. Mr. Axel, work my way back. I, I think perhaps we should hear from Mr. Cobb, because we had asked him a couple meetings back to consider bringing this um, function in top, inside the city. So until we hear his report on that, perhaps we should uh, put this matter off a little bit. Um, I understand probably, uh, Mr. Jones, you're functioning technically without a contract right now? Yes, sir. So um, we, we obviously need to do something to remedy that, but I think we need to hear from, from staff whether we can bring this matter in-house. Mr. Cobb, are you prepared to answer that at all? Uh, yes, sir, we're prepared to answer it. We, we put together some preliminary estimates on, based on staff time and expense. Uh, our total expense comes out to around $47,585.72. I believe Mr. Boop has copies of the, uh, our workup. Uh, we worked with Mr. Jones and put together some hours and staff time. This doesn't take into account any type of direct costs that we might have, uh, but uh, we are a little bit more expensive than uh, what, uh, what Mr. Jones is able to do. One of the things we did take and try to take into account is the staff that would be needed to uh, administer any of the capital projects because it's not just uh, not just us as far as over in City Hall. So, uh, but uh, yeah, the total came out to forty-seven thousand five eighty-five seventy-two, which is a little bit more than what uh, Mr. Jones's work order provides. Thank you, Mr. Cobb or Mr. Mayor. Well, oh. uh, Mr. Axel has the floor. Okay. Um, Given what Mr. Cobb has just uh, handed us and uh, that it may be more cost effective to go with Mr. Jones, I would like to take a look at the actual Exhibit A, that's the work order, 
and there, there's a couple matters I'd like some explanation of. Uh, first off, you, you do have a mistake that it's got last year's dates in there. You probably want to remedy that. Um, but the method of compensation is noted in subsection A as time basis with a limitation of funds, yet the actual uh, final page gives tasks but no times, no unit price for time. So I, I don't really understand how we're supposed to determine or you're supposed to tell us how much time you spent and how much time is left if, and what we pay for additional time because there is no amount of time and no amount of, of hourly expense here. It, we seem to be devoid of some, some details. That's, that's all I've got. Just wanted to raise those issues. Anybody have a response to that question at this time? Yes, sir. This is the uh, similar to the scope of services. It's basically a framework that was uh, presented at last year's uh, budget meeting and also this year that outlines the general meetings, uh, general facilitation, and tasks uh, that would be undertaken in the administration of the CRA. It does reserve flexibility in order to uh, allocate or to accommodate other projects as they are identified by the CRA board, an example of which would be last year's activities to update the CRA plan and a request for flexibility from the CRA board to deviate from this potential list of activities in order to accommodate the CRA plan update. So this is a framework that we can work within. Uh, when we invoice a city on a monthly basis, we provide a summary of the hours and the activities uh, and each task that we bill to the city so that you have a monthly total uh, associated with each invoice outlining just what the activities, tasks, and costs are to the city. Thank you. Uh, could I follow up? I was going to say you still have, I was gonna say you well, still have the floor. Uh, Mr. Cobb gave us an estimate that makes some presumptions that I find completely reasonable. We've discussed doing further amendments to the CRA plan, but in your proposal, that's not a specific uh, line item. Yes, sir. Is what you're saying, you know, maybe we don't need three meetings with the county. Uh, we can redirect your efforts elsewhere? Yes, sir. Are you saying that flexibility is there? Yes, sir, as it was last year. Okay, so, so basically the time that was estimated in Mr. Cobb's comparison, it's fair to, for us to consider that you're including all those tasks? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. That, that's all I've got. Okay, great. Councilwoman? Uh, my, my first question is on the recommendation. It says, it is recommended that we approve. Uh, it is recommended by whom? It's written in the third person. I, I, I'm, it's a genuine question. Yes, ma'am. Um, that It's kind of a, a circular recommendation. As the uh, CRA administrator, we have to put a recommendation in there. Um, the recommendation is forwarded to the city manager, and the city manager has a final say as to the recommendation. Okay, so the city manager recommends approval I, at the end of the day. Both sort do. of. You both do. Okay, both gotcha. Do. The, it, the recommendation is just what we try to do. We've tried to standardize their agenda memorandums for the CRA board to be just like the ones we give you for, as city council. And we do the same thing with our recommendations. In city council, we always say it's recommended that you do whatever action we're recommending. And so we did the same way with, okay. with theirs. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boop, I appreciate this. I have been wondering about bringing it in-house since, since arriving here. Uh, and I'm looking at it. Some of it seems very reasonable. And other things I, I look at it and wonder, is there anything different? Like there, there's two hours per meeting for, for you to be here. But you're here right now. So are we, do we need to add in that amount to uh, on top of the 45 because you're preparing and uh, then we have Barbara at five hours per meeting, but you're, you've always been here, and I don't know that we've ever thought of that as a separate cost. Uh, so if you subtract out the people who are here and participating anyway, it looks as if it may be a, a more sensible thing to bring it in-house. And the thought of it taking eight hours to get ready for this, it, it might take a whole day, but it just... Uh, that that seems like a little bit of an overestimate. I'd uh, be interested in feedback on how long it takes you to get ready for one of these meetings. The, the preparation time depends on the items that are covered in the agenda and the request for information have been made at the previous meeting. So previous meetings, 
Uh, we frequently get asked to look into an item, research an item, and bring back a report. And so depending on who we have to meet with, who we have to research items with, uh, what items we have to research and what type of preparation dictates how long it takes to put together an agenda preparation. So eight hours is a, is a reasonable estimate. Okay, so that's a good average? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Uh, and, and then just sort of the same thing for all of these, like the, I guess for the plan amendment, that would be something that you would take on that is specific to this year, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that would be a one-time cost. Uh, so may, maybe something for this board to consider in the future is when that is no longer a separate issue, the amendments, once that's completed, at some point it may, you know, it's a mathematical situation. Is there time and what is the value? And uh, maybe for next year, consider that. But if we just take everything that's here at face value, uh, it does look like it's a better value to stay the course. Great. Anything else? That's it for me. All righty. Uh, well, I appreciate everybody putting this information together. I mean, the one point that's being not mentioned here is that while the costs do seem to line up and we can debate dollars back and forth of staff time, the point being missed is that we'd be putting something else on our staff and taking their time away from something that they could be doing for the city as we are stretched pretty thin sometimes where right now we have Mr. Jones handling the CRA. The other point being missed, and it's frustrating, I know, for some of the board, is that you know the CRA has been taking time to build up, and it's not now it's starting to build up. The dollars are starting to build up. The projects are going to start coming online. It's going to get busier and busier now each year. So um, this time that's here, will exponentially grow as the projects grow. So, I mean, it's a good exercise. It needs to be looked at. I just uh, would encourage everybody to keep that in mind, that anything else we put on our staff is one less thing they're doing for the citizens of Oviedo or for the council, as we ask. So um, that's just my two cents. Anything else from the board? Hearing none, we have a motion on the table to adopt. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Jones, you've got a couple of status reports for us. Thank you very much, Mayor. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, we have a couple status reports with regards to the Wood Street extension and the public art programming. With regards to the Wood Street extension, uh, the design for the street has been completed. The funds have been reserved in the CRA's annual budget. Uh, Public Works is planning to let the RFQ for contractors this fiscal year, and they anticipate that contract being let in uh, Q3 of fiscal year 1819. Great. And how about on the public art program? With regards to public art, uh, tonight you're going to have a public art policy program presentation uh, by Ms. Correa, and it's going to outline the public art program itself. Um, with regards to how that will interact with the CRA, Potential project types will be presented to the CRA in the future after the adoption of the public art project, mm -hmm. uh, and that will be for the CRA authorization for the use of funds uh, that have been budgeted for public art. Great. Are there any questions of Mr. Jones on either item A or B from the board? No? All right. Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Jones. We yes, appreciate sir. the update. Uh, Future meeting dates we have, I'm just going to list the next three because we have a whole year here. Yes, sir. Uh, so coming up, we have uh, next meeting of the CRA board will be December 3rd, 2018 at 5.30 p.m. Then we have February 4th, 2019, 5.30 p.m. and April 1st, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. With that being announced, is there anything else from the board or anybody on the good of the order? Uh, one item. Sure, of course. Uh, I believe it was... Uh Member Britton that brought up at a meeting that we would like to look at funding, and I think you at a subsequent meeting, Mr. Mayor, uh, the potential improvements to the old post office. Mm -hmm. And I had raised the issue, I believe, that there's a limitation in the current redevelopment plan for the community center improvements to be in Oviedo in the park. Um, I'd like to ask if it's the pleasure of everyone else here that we have Mr. Jones look into that matter, and if we do, in fact, need to revise the redevelopment plan that we 
consider at the next, next meeting doing that after hearing his report so that we can fund that in the future. So, Dave, my, just so I understand your question, I think right. you're saying you're not quite sure that the, the way the plan is currently written that we could expend the money on the community center in the old downtown? I, I believe what Mr. Jones said when this matter was raised that either the last meeting or the previous one is we need to research more closely the redevelopment plan. I'm just asking that he does that, and if, in fact, we need to make a change, he'll be prepared to tell us uh, at our December meeting so we could recommend to the council to do so. Any That's objections it. from anyone? No. Nope. Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Jones, is that possible to bring back to us on December 3? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Mayor, we have researched this item previously, and it is identified in the plan, a community center, senior center, a historic museum, and potential reuse of the library as well. Um, so it is an identified item in the redevelopment plan. All right, if you could just bring back that information. Yes, sir, I'll prepare, it I'll prepare a memo. So that way we see it all in black and white. I think yes, that's sir. what Mr. Axel's asking That's for. it. Okay. Anything else? No? Mr. Cobb, anything? No, sir. All righty. Well, with that all being said, Mr. Jones, anything before I adjourn? Uh, no, sir. All righty. We're adjourned.